this is ep four. So last one for the summer series because you'll get fresh me next week. That's called fresh. It is fresh. Fresh meat, please, just coming at you. Oh, yum, 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 tataki. So this episode, we're going back to have a little listen to some of the conversation that Alicia Aitken Radburn and I had. So this is the special reality TV episode. Alicia wrote a book, The Villain Edit, which we talk about in depth and she, oh, just enjoy. Also, the other half of this episode will be with Melinda Willis, who was on MAFS uh, this year and all about her business. We ended up chatting for quite a while with her, but we've cut it down so you get the best of, because that's what this series is. It's the best of. This week, recording on Wurundjeri Country, together in the studio, I have, oh my God, one of my dearest, loveliest, kind of old, well not yeah, old, it, it but you've known each other a long time yeah, now. Yeah, it has. Alicia Aitken Radburn, Thank welcome you. to Two Girls, One Pod. You're going to be one of the girls. I'm one of the girls on the pod. I am so, so excited. I'm so excited to have you. Now, what I want to know about your name is why have you kept your father's name when you were brought up by a single mum? Well, so it was actually my mum's decision. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I think that that's something I've always really, really admired about my mum. And and I think this is something that I will take one day when I am a parent, Um I think it's really difficult when children grow up in environments where perhaps the start of their life, you know, it's it wasn't a nuclear family structure or whatever, um, and one parent is is very constantly sort of belittling or um, bringing that other parent down, no matter what mm-hmm. the context. I think that I personally think that it is appropriate to protect children from that until they're sort of of an age where they can have that adult conversation and understand the yeah. adult dynamics at play Absolutely. Um, because it does really stop them from carving their own path if they Absolutely. if they want to. I think we project adult emotions onto kids a All lot of the time. time. All the time. And that was something that mum did really well yes. that I really admired her for, that she never, you know, there were lots of difficulties and I did, I did overhear the occasional sort of uh, elevated phone call with my dad but she really never indoctrinated me with perhaps what her view of the situation was at some times. That's quite rare. Yeah. There's, I mean, Oprah always used to, not always, but I just remember an an episode where, you know, she'd have all the experts in and this one woman said, never, ever, no matter how bad your relationship gets with your husband, or your wife or whatever, never bad mouth them to the child because yes. that child, and it's not just a, you know, make that, well, that makes sense and that's going to hurt. No, that child is half made from them. That, yes. You are insulting them, literally yeah. insulting oh, them. I've never thought no. about it like that. And I've never forgotten it because there's just so many, I'm, you know, growing up you've got kids who come from um single parents, families, and, you know, you'd go to someone's house and someone would be, you know, the mother would be like, oh, he's a dick and he's yes. a, you know, and you're like, ha, oh, that's funny. But not knowing the trauma that that parent is instilling, that's going to take years of unpacking and, you know, and the child not ever knowing how to, <laughs> what to do with that uh, hatred that's coming at them. Definitely, and I think it also brings sort of going back to the idea of projecting adult emotions onto a child. It, if, if one parent is more proximate to the child than the other, then you sort of have this, you bring things like loyalty into yes. play yes. and and of course a child is going to be, to be loyal, loyal to the person that they're most proximate to. And so And then it gets to that point where they start playing each other yes. because they know they can and they don't know why they want to do that and they hate themselves for it, not understanding any of the emotions that come with that kind of thing. So I really, really liked your mum. Your mum's name's Donna. Yeah. <laughs> and I never forgot that because we knew each other years yeah. ago, um, which I'll get to in a minute how we met. But um I remember seeing you on Honey Badger yes. and the three mean girls and um, I really, really liked you a lot. I did not like the other two. Like- I, I'm getting this a lot. I'm getting that um, people sort of still – and I think I was – I think probably the moments I really wasn't featured very much no. at all. And then the moments that I was, I think maybe my 
villainy came off. I, I think I did really tread the line between the sort of funny, snarky narrator yeah. that was saying how the audience felt, which I think is what a lot of um, people who go on The Bachelor as a contestant, I think if you're not a front runner, I think a lot of people aspire to sort of play in that space. If you can. If, See, yes. this is the difference. Watching you, I can remember clearly watching you and going, oh, she's got away with her words, this one. She's so entertaining. You know, I can see why they're keeping her around because he's, you know, clearly not not interested. But the I remember thinking to myself or saying to Angie, um, she's a girl's girl. Like she she's just there for the friendships. Like yeah, absolutely. She, she's not even into him. Like, um, <laughs> but she's great because she's she would have your back. This is the kind of girl that will always have your back. And then I thought, still you know, bitch by association, like, you know, mm. and still because we were on Gogglebox at the time and that were, was what we were doing, like, you know, and reality, t- and this is something that's in your book as well about how there's a, um, <laughs> you know, people would be described that go on reality TV and you put this in your book as fame-hungry, self-centred egotists who gain, who just want to gain a following, flog some skinny tea <laughs> and, you know, how wrong you can be. And I had Ash um, Pollard on the pod a couple yes. of weeks ago and she said, everyone, like, it's amazing how many people think we've come out of the womb. We've got not got any I, life uh, Yeah, I us. heard Ash talking about it and it was so... It was so correct and yeah. it was Steve Price yes. who sort of, she had one conversation with him. But she watched and his, his eyes go. Eyes were open. How wrong was I? And that's, I don't know where people get that well, from. Well, you know, the funny thing is that I had, I had someone comment on that post, like when I put mm. that up, and they said, you've been guilty of that in the past, you oh, know, of as saying a, that As about, a commentator. Yeah. And I've had to really have a think about it because I am very guilty of it. But... As I was reading your book saying it, I've written underneath it, yeah, but they can be. (laughs) And this is it. And every time, like, as I'm on the book tour and I'm talking about the book, um, I'm I'm also trying to make it clear that the villain edit is my story and it's my experience of receiving that edit and, you know, how I've reflected on my behaviour since and how I felt about the producers. It's all very me. It's not going to speak for every villain. No. Um, It's so funny, Evie. So I've, like, (laughs) received some messages from when I first put the book cover up, I've received a bit of feedback from some other reality TV villains from other TV shows. Can you name them? Who sort of, no, no, I'm not. okay. And I don't actually know many of them personally. Um, But I think people have kind of seen the book cover and funnily enough, like sort of judged the book by its cover and thought that it was going to be like an advocacy piece for reality TV villains. Oh, right. And and sort of like a... What, do they think they were going to be in it? I think that they maybe thought it was more f- like r- rather than my story and, and a memoir and Just a general. sort of like a more factual research-based deconstruction of the world that is TV production. Okay. And I had to sort of like, I felt like, oh, hold your horses. Yeah. There's just a little bit more nuance in it than that. Like I do think I interrogate some of the elements of the TV production process, which I think increasingly us as audiences and viewers are starting to be aware of. I think people are more... so We are so much more savvy of what's going yes. on. But that's what I find really interesting is that back in the day it was people would go on these shows. Like I used to say, oh, people would go on these shows, you know, for love. Like Angie's season of The Bachelorette had your husband on it. Oh, and it- I'm just assuming he went on for love because he doesn't seem like a fame whore. Well, see, I didn't go on The Bachelor for love. No. I mean, it's hard. I thought you did. So this is what... But you know what? I thought about this this morning and I can remember opening the fridge and thinking, who goes on TV for love? It's hard because there was definitely... I don't don't want the sort of like Daily Mail to capture that and be like, Alicia admits she wasn't there for love. Yes. I think the, the driving force was really... The experience, because I think that any sort of smart woman is realistic enough to sort of look at the structure of the show and think, okay, 28 other girls 
just some like basic sort of um, stats, not looking that great. But I did, I remember I was just before I actually went on the show, I was walking around, um, Sydney listeners will know the Bay Run in Des Moines, mm. and I was doing my laps of the Bay Run <laughs> and I was thinking I definitely did have this this glimmering hope that I do believe that we can meet our person or our people, whether that's romantic or platonic, in all sorts of places and it's only through putting ourselves out there and, you know, really, yeah, really diving into experiences that we we find those relationships. So I kind of had this glimmer of hope that, you know, it could happen. Why why would I sort of write off the fact that I could get out of the limo, walk down the red carpet and maybe that person is the, is the love of yeah. my life. So I, I think was a open. lot of people ha- have that thought when mm. they go on those kind of shows and what we're talking about like people today are so much more savvy. Every single season you have the villains that come out of maths and I mean these are we we had have nothing on these villains. Oh, like, and what, again going back crucified. to like it's only my story because I think that like um you know there and you were saying that there are a variety of people on reality tv like some people do go on there to yes. flog skinny tea yes. and there are some villains amongst us yeah, amongst former all. villains yes. that that are probably not the best people and yeah. really need needed that experience of being put in their place and even for me where i would sort of like maybe on the spectrum of villainy i'm a lighter villain um <laughs> it was <laughs> the spectrum of villainy <laughs> But but even I, like, it was a learning experience for me because through the book I've sort of managed to, when I've reflected on that time, there were definitely things that I was doing that were a part of my personality and that the TV production sort of, but the producers were able to sort of like pull parts, pull on parts of my personality that made me do things that like I, I don't look back incredibly I don't regret them deeply but I I you know if I was in that same position now with all the growth that's happened in my life part of that just being like 25 to 30 incredibly different tell me about your family you've got three brothers yeah three where are you in there (laughs) so we're all kind of a year apart so mum had four of us under four whoa a handful. <laughs> that is, yeah. And where are you in the mix? So I'm second oldest. Second oldest? Yes. Okay, so you had some someone to pick on too, to pick on. And, <laughs> yeah. Or or did they were they just picking on you? What was it like to have three brothers? What is it like? Not was. Yeah. I mean, we're still very close. Yeah. Um, so close that I guess the meld that you saw on maths is a lot of the relationships with my brothers, like very strong-headed, very opinionated, very like if something's wrong, I'll call it right. Um, And that is that comes from my three brothers and that comes from that like kind of competitive nature with them, like all my drive and motivation for business and doing like what's right. Yeah. And then the other... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I'm just getting excited about how how wonderful that is. Oh, um, and it's very interesting because my brothers are very different to me. Mm-hmm. So I would say if you met all four of us in a room, you wouldn't put us together as a family because I guess usually I feel it's generally the males that are more, you know, um, competitive, driven, motivative, like well, loud, they're, they're opinionated. They're made to be, aren't they? Because that's what I wanted to say to you. Having three boys in a family and being so successful as the woman in the family yeah. of the siblings, normally it's the boys that are the success because patriarchy makes it that way. That they're the ones that are told you can do anything, you can be anything, and yeah. you you do everything. But you've got brothers who've clearly either made you competitive or you or to, have to, have they told you you can be anything? Did you have those parents that said you know you're the same as your brothers? No, I kind of had the opposite. Right. I kind of had – dad is a very, like, boy's boy. Okay. So he's very, like, protect the protect the females, protect the daughter. So we would get, like, a little bit of money to walk to the shops, you know, on the weekend to go buy lollies or something. But the boys were allowed to go on their own and I was never allowed to go on my own. <laughs> and the boys always were kind of in charge of everything yeah. and it was, like, always taught to, like – protect the female she's more delicate which is not me (laughs) not you at all so you've done that yourself you've yeah I guess this I'm Mm. I I don't need to be protected dad I can do this and you've proven it 
Yes, I did one time try and go to the shops on my own just to prove that point. And there was a Rottweiler dog there. It's totally off topic, but there was this big Rottweiler dog that ended up chasing me. I got stuck behind a brick wall. My brothers had to come save me. But oh, no. I still did it. The <laughs> irony of that. But that that is an anomaly. <laughs> that would not normally happen. Exactly. So, it, And it didn't clearly stop you from being a kick-ass anyway. Yeah. But, so did you grow up in Brisbane? Yes, I grew up in Brisbane. I My family kind of haven't done much travel at all. I know that no one had really been out of Queensland. Mm-hmm. Um, I think mum and dad had done some Australia trips, but no one had really been out. And I guess when I was 19 years old, I left Australia on my own for the first time to go to London and work on board cruise ships. So things like that, you know, I'm like, mum's always said I'm that little cub that is just always running and always doing something and always just, I'm her different cub, she says. So she's got all her boys that are really safe and they're really like, you know, um, kind kind of that more straightforward way of thinking. And then you've got me that's like, let me run free. I can do better. I can be the best. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I've only got one brother. We had foster brothers as well, but every one of them is, st- is st- still at home, like not in the house, but they're all homebodies. They're all married. They're all, you know, settled down. I was the one that left young, got, went overseas yeah. on my own, did it all. And it's funny because <laughs> I, I do believe, and this is often said by mums who have young kids, that the, the girls are just tougher. They're just tougher. The boys yeah. are very sensitive little things, and and that's I what's really so believe sad that, that they're, <laughs> it's kind of smacked out of them. You know, it's like mm. just don't cry when boys, when they're babies and and little toddlers, they they can be so emotional. Why do we ever get rid of that? Like they just let them yeah. be because we end up being the ones who are the, you know, I guess I mean, push babies out of our vaginas and we, <laughs> you know, have all these reproductive problems and the pains that. I truly don't believe a lot of men would be able to handle. I mean, and I love watching those TikToks. You know, the ones where they put on the TENS machine on the. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I think every boyfriend should do it. Every husband should do it. Everyone needs to know. Before you start a relationship with someone, say, come over here. I've got something (laughs) to attach to your abdomen. (laughs) Just want to see how you deal with it. And then you've got some respect for me. I had Ash Pollard on a couple of weeks ago and we were talking and she said something so interesting about reality TV, which I couldn't agree with more, is that when you see people on reality TV, you think they're just born out of the womb, that they've got nothing <laughs> that they've done in their lives before they've been I on reality. I saw this. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And I it's watched so that true, one. Yeah. isn't it? <laughs> because, you know, you're just talking about cruise ships and everything. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's going to be so many things that you've done. Yeah. That is so interesting and that everyone, I mean, I guess I did I did think after watching that, I thought, no, there are the, some some people that really do go on reality TV and they've just come out of school. They really haven't done anything in their lives. But it's true. <laughs> there are a few of them. Um, I always think of that one meme. <laughs> it's got a, a guy um, and it has his name like Chad Evans or something and it has underneath former child. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's all he's had. That's all he's had in his life. So it's like it, it can so be. A, but you're not one of those people. Um, married at first sight. Um, you are so beautiful. I mean, it's it's just such a common frigging question to ask. You know, a beautiful woman. But you're not just stunning. You're really successful. And you. See, oh, I do want to just say this before I ask that question. The relationship that you have with your nana. Yes. <laughs> Made me cry. Oh. <laughs> like it was so beautiful and I was really, really glad to see a matriarch um, kind of relationship play out with you and that was really lovely. Also absolutely loved what you had to say about Harrison. Like what a stain <laughs> that man is. Like did, is he – was he worse? Look, I – <laughs> he, he, I know with this question, right? But it's like I felt at the time that that his edit is a good edit. Like I felt at the time that it could have been so much worse. Yeah, right. But that was me living in, you know, obviously my Harrison Mel feud. Yeah, but yeah. man, he grind my gears. And yeah. it's like all I saw when I saw Harrison was just him there with this big pot just stirring so, it. Yeah. Like, well, and just we saw stirring that. it. That's all, and he would say it yeah. to camera. Like, he was just like, yeah, that's what, you know, 
I'm I'm just going in there and I'm just saying it how it is and they may not like that. And it's just like, you've got it so wrong. He thought in his mind a hundred percent that he was the hero of the yes. show and he just would not stop telling me that I'm the villain, that I'm the villain, that I'm the villain. And Jeez. you know what is yeah, you know what's so funny? I believe this on reality TV. If you are sitting there and you're a little bit worried thinking, could I have this villain edit? Could people not like me because I'm opinionated I'm this? Chances are you're not the villain. If you sit there and you're thinking, it's not me, it's her, it's him, it's you're the villain. Yes, like, yes. And there were a few of them in there that did that to me and we're spreading this little thing of, you know, to the intruders when they came in, like, be careful of Mel, she's going to be this year's villain. Like, And it, when we did the couple swap, like, he was feeding me the same stuff and, you know, it it came out the other way, obviously. Other, yeah. Because I was thinking, like, he's trying to gaslight me. I'm like, wait, am I? <laughs> and at the end of the day, whatever, if being a strong, powerful independent, opinionated mm-hmm. woman mm-hmm. makes me the villain, mm-hmm. so be it. So be it. And you, <laughs> oh, and it didn't. It didn't at all. And I remember watching the first, well, like the marriage between, the wedding, sorry, between you and Leighton and they were really like, they really set you up. Like they really did that edit of she's a princess, she's going to be a mole, um, she's, you know, she doesn't like anyone. Oh, she's going to find out he's got money. Oh, she's happy now and blah, blah, blah. And um, I remember... Uh, Because Clementine fought. She didn't this year, but last year she was always watching the episodes and she's a very good friend of mine. So we would talk a lot about how... The, the edit was going to play out and how we were being told as an audience, you're going to, you have to dislike this person. Yeah. Um, and she would always break. I don't know if you've ever watched her breakdown. She didn't do it for your season, which was such a shame, but her and I would Damn. talk <laughs> because I, and I have that way of thinking. I was watching it and I'm like, oh, you're, you're telling us to not like her. I'm going to like her immediately then. And then she's going to prove to me why I'm going to like her. And you <laughs> did. Like, you totally did. Like, you were such a likeable char- character. You were, you were yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think I think that's, you know, the only way to, to really do it and then, you know, come what may. But I know that during that wedding, you know, so many people came in and they instantly like their partner and they instantly want to get to know their partner and, they all have watched maths before. They all know what Australia likes. They all not know what makes people not liked. So people are coming in there to be this perfect, you know, cookie cutter reality star. Yep. And I guess I went in so real that I was like, this is my real life regardless whether people are going to watch it. This is still my real life. I don't want to lose three months of it. I've given up a lot to be here. So I'm going to be me. And if I don't click with this person, there's no way I'm going to turn to camera and say, Yes, like beautiful, so happy. We'll work on it. Like, no, it's I'm still going to work on it, yeah. but I'm just not going to say so, and lie. So, well, that's what I yeah. thought you were refreshing because you were like, mm, yeah, you know, you did the, uh, what, what, you numbered him, rated him, I think, or you rated yourself. And the, I just thought, like, yeah. yes, yes, because that's Sorry. true. <laughs> you know what? It's like when I look back at that, originally I watched the wedding and I was laughing and I was thinking, yeah, that's me. I'm sarcastic. Like he knew it on the day. That's why he told his chat to camera that I was funny. His friends were all saying we're a match. And then I was like, so surely like people can see through that, right? That what they're trying to make me look like, it's not lining up with what everyone else is saying. But then viewers are so brainwashed, I guess, with the music, with the context missing with everything that they just instantly go to the defense of someone they think is, you know, being treated a type of way. Yeah which he wasn't. So when I'm chatting to my camera and that missing context is there, I'm being, you know, I'm baited on these questions. It's like they actually think like Leighton's actually feeling that way from me and it just wasn't like that on the day. Yeah, very different. It's amazing. It always makes me think of back in the days, like maths, this is maths to a T. It's very um, Roman Colosseum throw them to the lions someone's got to be a villain someone's got to be a hero and no one really cares who it's like they're not real so and they're and these people are about to be eaten by lions so we don't care we just want to see the carnage and that to me is married at first sight to a t the amount of people that come off that show and then say 
don't go on that show. Like, just don't apply because you don't know if you're yeah. going to get the bad edit. It's a or roll not. of the and dice. A it, it is, isn't it? Mm. It really is. And if you do get that bad edit, um, you then get the vitriol that goes on and on and on. And if you don't have yeah. a strength of character, you are going to. I mean, I, I mean, it's only a matter of time before, just like the UK, someone takes their life from the bullying. Yeah. It's but, pretty heavy stuff. Yeah. It is. It's really heavy stuff. And that's what we don't get as the viewer because you're not yeah. real. And then- Do you know what? It's like I've watched maths for years mm-hmm. and I always knew going on that, yes, I'm quite opinionated. I may not be liked, right? And I thought I've got to protect my businesses. That's what I care about most is like I don't want to come off and then – have so much hate to me that that's tarnished all the hard work, all the other people involved. And I can't do that to them. And then, you know, but at the same time, I want to find my partner. I want to live my life. Um, But I just, you know, I'm pretty strong and I'm pretty resilient. And I just told myself like, that's fine. If people don't like me, who cares? I've had that my whole life. Um, They don't know me. They don't this. And you start to just think that yep. but when it actually happens yeah. I I feel a little blessed in the way that even though I had kind of that you know villain edit for 24 hours yeah. it was horrible and even though it lasted 24 hours for everyone else it lasted a good week for me right and it's still it, even going on through the show I was a little bit broken a little bit bruised watching it just from that edit that I couldn't right. I couldn't shake or um yeah. but I kept telling myself you know what the viewers would think and then when it all happened, the comments and the – they tell you not to look at them, but you can't help it. No, and the right. comments are enormous. And you can't – you're almost going through them to find just maybe one comment that's a good one. Yeah. And I couldn't find any. And it bypasses – it literally bypasses your mind and your strength and it goes into your soul and you can't really rinse it out. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how strong you are, how much you think it's not going to affect you. Yeah. It's going to affect you. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed uh, your holidays. Uh, I'll be back next week in the flesh, in your ear holes. Please rate, review, subscribe, do all the things. Share the stuff if you like it. Please let your friends know. Um, And love each other. 